gets the, uh, gets to Stephanie Link for those moves that I mentioned before. So you added, let's do number one. You added to Target. Yeah. In a week where you know Walmart's getting a lot of chat. Why why'd you add to Target? I know these are so not as exciting as Amazon and right. that's what we're just good. talking about. If the about. stock goes up, it's exciting. But, um, but yeah, they've been doing some interesting things, Scott. So they promoted the CFO to COO, um, which I think is sort of kind of interesting. They've been po focusing on new product initiatives, differentiation, um, and they've also focused on changing their ad agency after 20 years. And so, but I kind of think I add all these things together, and I kind of think that they're going on the offensive versus the defensive. They've already lowered the inventories pretty big time. They've already tried to transition their products to less discretionary, more consumables. I think we know all that. Mm -hmm. But all of these other changes kind of caught my eye. And I do think operating margins can go higher. And I think you can see $10 a share in earnings power by 2025. And I, I do think this is kind of off the radar screen. I think everybody loves Walmart for good reason. But I think maybe there's a comeback here. Well, you know, because it's almost like Target made you take it off of the the radar I screen know, for a while, course, right? Of course. They had, you know, a bunch of missteps. Yes. They had bloated inventories. Uh, quarter after quarter, you'd hear from Brian Cornell, highly respected CEO, obviously, trying to figure out when they were going to be able to get it right. Yeah. And I think last quarter they did get a lot right. They didn't get the same store sales. They didn't get the revenue, but they got the operating margin right. That really surprised investors and kind of gets us a path to, is it 7 or 8% operating margins over the next couple of years? And if they can just get some top line, which is why the new product initiatives are interesting to me, if they can just get some of the top line and you get the margin side of it, well, then you have a very powerful earnings story. GE Healthcare, you added to that too. Yeah. Um, on the decline yesterday? It was down 4% yesterday for no reason. And I thought that, I think this company's doing a really good job. Hospital CapEx is going to go up about 2.5% this year. Utilization rates, we know that uh, from many of the uh, med tech companies, they're going much higher. And that benefits GE Healthcare. And in addition, they're starting to see an improvement sequentially on margins. And so if margins go higher, better CapEx, decent organic growth of something like 5%, it's trading at like 15 times forward estimate. It's pretty cheap. Stock don't looks great. Don't expect any more buys of these either, because these are full for you oh, now. Big positions for me now. The yeah. other one I want to talk about was was one of yours. It's not a it's not a new move. It, it, you know, we're not talking about today. Quanta Services. Yeah. All time high today. So it's a top five position. Yes. For you, what what it was earnings? Yeah. Which is why we have a record. Yeah, I mean, they beat earnings and they beat revenue and guidance went higher. Um, and these guys are a bit beneficiary of, of the whole onshoring theme, North America energy transition. You're going to see investments as much as $4 trillion between now and 2050. And these guys are right in the middle of it. And they're one of the best operators, too. And they beat across the board. Um, the only thing I wasn't too crazy about was margins, because, you know, I'm a big margin person. But I love the, the top line and the bottom line beat. It's one of the best performers in the S&P. And it is the best performing stock in the industrial space today, too. So I'm glad we highlighted that.